See, God is so wonderful. He wants to obey Him for our good. Hmm. Notice in the time, in the book of Job, 35 chapter 6 to 8, written, If you sin, how does that affect you? For sins of many, what does that do to you? If you are righteous, what do you give him? What does he receive from my hand? Your wickedness only affects a man like yourself. Your righteousness only the sons of men. So when the prophet spoke, they spoke sometimes words that be hard to take, but for edification of people. When they turn from the ways, they will be blessed. So the law counsels them, the prophets counsel them by hearing from God and building up people. Then the Lord Jesus Christ came. When he came, you all know how much you depend on him. And he walked the court to him. He gave them a blank check. Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Come to me all the weary and burden I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart. You will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. When he walked this earth, he told the people to come to me. We are weary, burden, we need counseling, encouragement. Come to me. You will find rest for your soul. Yes. Rest for soul means peace of mind. Mm. The word soul is zuke in Greek. And the word zuke because the English word psycho psychology, psychiatry, psychic to do the mind. Rest for the soul means rest for the mind. No anxiety, no discouragement, but peace of mind. When you give your problems to Jesus and leave it with him, don't take it back. Some give it to him and take it back with him. <laughs> Lord, I'm very anxious about this, Lord. The problem is coming, Lord. I'm giving it to you. Take it all. I'll give it to him. Lord, how are you going to handle this problem? <laughs> That's the first question. Second question, when are you going to handle this? <laughs> and God uh, says, that is mine, it's not yours. It's not answer good person. It's not answer good person. I'm handling it. Give it to me. But we can't take part. <laughs> when you've got time left. Six months, Lord, I'm giving you time. <laughs> Who's giving who time? The servant giving master time. <laughs> Four months passes, five months passes, and you think the problem is still there. Then the amazing thing is, we go on a three-day hunger strike and call it fasting. <laughs> Once you give it to God, forget about it. He says, come to me. I'll give you rest. No weariness, rest for soul. Otherwise, you're weary and you're burdened. So he was a counselor. Law was a counselor, only this. Prophet's counsel, I think the Messiah came and counsel. Then one day he's going back. He says, I'm going back. I'm going to have another counselor to be with you forever. And amazingly, he tells the disciples, It is for your good I am going away. What does he happen to make? I'm going away, good for you. They would have got confused. The disciples immediately didn't understand what he said. They were afraid to ask him also. They are quite simple people. Do not understand? Scared to ask us. So the question remained with them. But they didn't want to ask him clarification and didn't understand. He says them, to them, for your good and going away. Unless I go away, counsel will not come to you. But if I go, I will send it to you. John 16, 7. And then we all know, Holy Spirit came upon the disciples, fill them, remain with them. Today, we have the counsel of the Holy Spirit living inside us. And we have the law, we have the words of the prophets, words of Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Four times blessed. Olden days only law, then law and the prophets, then law, prophets, and Jesus. Today, law, prophets, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit who lives in us forever. Can you imagine how blessed we are? When you have a problem, what do you first think about? Who to go to for counseling? I have no fellowship, a lovely fellowship in Dubai, Amazing Grace Church. I'm going to the desert. New place, no fellowship. I'm going to backslide. How can you 
Holy Spirit is going to fellowship. Holy Spirit is living inside you. The room you have is supposed to have fellowship. How can you get it? How can you say, I am lonely? The word lonely is taboo for a Christian. Don't ever say lonely. It's like saying, God is not in me. Now you use the word hopeless. The word hopeless is blasphemy. You know what? Jesus is our hope. Amen. To say hopeless to the world, there is no Jesus. First Timothy 1.1 Jesus Christ, our hope. Now, when you go through trials, how can you be encouraged? As you go through trials, you hold on to God's promise to rise above trials. If you look at Psalm 119 verse 15, the psalm says, My comfort in my suffering is this, Your promise preserves my life. Your word preserves my life. You all go through trials. In those trials, they are comforted by the word of God. How does the psalmist know God's word? Verse 148, he says, My eyes stay open to the waters of the night, that I may meditate on your promises. This man, the psalmist, called the scholars who was Ezra who wrote the Psalm 119. <coughs> and I David, David wrote many Psalms, but they say the Psalm written by Ezra. Ezra loved God's word. In fact, he says in verse 167, I keep your statutes because I love them greatly. Verse 165, Great peace have they who love your law, nothing will make them stumble. He loved God's word. He delighted in God's word. That's why he says, the statues of Manila, they are my counselors. So when the suffering came, he was counseled by the word of God. He went above the trial, was encouraged. When he faced affliction, he says something amazing. Verse 75, 